So you've just missed the green with your second shot and you now got a chip shot. Do you consider the lie that you're actually chipping on? Because if you've only got one chipping technique, you better hope that that works for that lie. The reality is, is if you're struggling with chip shots around the green, it's because you're not adapting your chipping technique to different lies. In this video, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw a load of balls around the green so we can play different lies. I'm gonna show you the basic chipping technique, but I'm also then gonna show you what you've gotta do with that technique to change it so it works from bare lies, deep rough lies, all the lies around the green. This is how you become an effective chipper. Now, before I get into the video, look, if you're new to the channel, it's one of your first lessons of mine, please consider subscribing. I release videos just like this one every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, you never have to remember a thing. I'll always put a free download or practice guide in the description box below. Now, let's go and have a look and play all these lies. So before I show you how to play all the lies, let me just show you what a chipping strike looks like. So to do that, you're gonna to need to understand the bounce. A lot of people aren't aware of that, so let's give you a little recap. If I put the shaft beautifully vertical here, can you see how the leading edge here is higher than this bottom bit? This angle that you're seeing here, this is the bounce. If I was to lean the shaft forward now, all of that bounce has been taken off, okay? If you fat the golf ball, you're taking so much of the bounce off that now the leading edge gets stuck into the ground and you fat it. If, for instance, you put too much of the bounce on and now look, the leading edge is too high, you blade it across the back of the green, all right? So your ability to manage that bounce is crucial in your ability to strike the shot, okay? So how do you do that? Let's start, look, I've got a couple of shots here. This is very typical of a, you know, a shot around the green. You've got a good lie and then one inside, which is an absolute shocker. So let's start with a good lie first. So how do we make sure we get good strike? Good setup is the foundation of a good strike. So ball position, if you want it high, you move, you move the ball forward in your stance, mid flight, middle, back of your stance, gives you a lower flight. So all we do to get the strike is we make sure that the, we've got a narrow stance here, about a club width apart, foot pointing out towards the target. Now this is one key that everyone misses. Get your shoulders level, okay, when you're chipping. What that does is it means that you get a downward strike on this golf ball here. If your shoulders get too tilted back, what that does is it sends the low point behind the golf ball and you start to strike it fat or even thin, okay? So get your shoulders level. Now when you put the club in, I don't like to have too much shaft lean because every time you put the shaft lean in, okay, this sandwich here has got 12 degrees of bounce. If I, as we said, if we take too much of that off, I'm increasing the likelihood that I'm gonna fat it. So I like the shaft look from vertical just slightly further forward, okay? From here, I'm gripping nice and relaxed with my triceps resting beautifully on my chest. And you can see from this angle, I'm actually stood reasonably close to the golf ball. Very different to what you would have for a full power shot like this, okay? I naturally stand closer because I want control. And the only thing left now is to make sure that your weight favors the left side or your lead side. How much? 60, 70% on, on my lead side. Now in terms of swing, I keep it really, really simple. Most golfers make the mistake of being very stiff and wooden because they want control. What I want you to do, control actually comes from freedom. So what I like to do is, is I've got my tricep connected. I like to get the club fall under gravity. Okay, I'm letting the club just fall on the ground. Now what I also do is, and you can do this yourself, is often scratch a line either side of the golf ball. Okay, just when I'm practicing. And what that does is it allows me a destination point to land. Now if I find myself, for instance, landing the club here, which you might do initially, I'll adjust my body. I might put more weight on my lead side. I might to level my shoulders off. This is really important, right? Now, look, there you go. Now I'm on the, on the line, okay? Now I won't just drop the club. I need to make sure that this club works on an arc, just like every golf swing. If I just swing my arm like this in a straight line, I will screw the shot up. So the golf swing, even chipping, is a mini arc. So now what I do is I let the club drop and I get out of the way. This arc is created by my shoulders working up and around. The up and around, it helps the club drop and swing beautifully through to the target. That is all I'm thinking about. So I do that before the shot, and now I'm getting an idea of where I'm finishing, and that gives me the foundation of a simple chip shot, okay? So let's have a look at this. I've got a 56 degree, but before we go into this tough one, this has options. I, with this shot here, I can use 56, I can use 7 iron, 8 iron, you name it, find your favorite one. You have options from here. Now, all I'm doing here, ball's fairly, I'm actually, I've got a lot of green to work with. I'm gonna move the ball back in my stance. Now, all I'm gonna do here is focus on letting the club drop 
and focusing on my finish, where the butt here is pointing towards my left hip. Okay, this is a simple chip shot. I don't want a high finish like this. I don't want to be flicking like this with the butt pointing over here. I'm simply going to finish with the butt pointing towards my lead hip here. Let's have a look at this in action. You see here, look, just runs beautifully out to the hole. Now we move to this one. This one I don't have options, okay? I can't use an eight-hand here. I'm gonna have to stick to my 56, but I'm gonna make a, an adjustment now. I want the ball here, the ball's nestled down. I can't play this one here because the grass is gonna get stuck and I'm gonna end up smothering it. So I'm actually gonna do something a little bit weird. I'm gonna take the club from where it was set up at uh, address, and I'm actually gonna raise the heel off the ground so the toe now is on the ground. I'm actually gonna hit the golf ball more out of the toe of the club. Um, I do this because this has less, less resistance. It's almost like it's gonna dig now underneath the golf ball. So the feeling that I'm gonna get here is I'm gonna get a bit closer to the golf ball. Okay, I might just open my stance just a little bit. And all I'm gonna do is imagine now, letting the club drop again, but this time as I let it drop, I'm gonna imagine the, the toe of the club slipping under the golf ball and what it's going to do is going to give me a little bit elevation i'm probably going to, have to hit it a little bit harder okay but i'm going to focus on the similar finish this time where's my butt pointing a little bit more towards my belly button this is the chip towards my left hip now my finish as i'm slipping the club look under the ball is more towards my belly button let's have a look at this in action so a bit closer So it's popped out beautifully, but what's happened? Didn't go very far. Now, why didn't it go very far? It didn't go very far because of one thing. As I'm talking to you and thinking about these movements, I lacked one thing, flow, rhythm, letting go. I see this a lot when people are chipping. So the one thing that is paramount with all the chips I'm gonna show you is this. You, when you focus on your finish, it shouldn't be stiff like this. It should be committed. Let the club drop and flow and trust your motion. Let's have a look at this one in action as a comparison. Much more committed. Look at the difference, okay? That is what is gonna be paramount to your shots around the green. Let's go and play some more. So this is a lie that most golfers hate. You've just hit it through the green, you've got all this beautiful lush grass around and your ball has found the only place on the golf course that has absolutely no grass underneath the golf ball. How do you play those rock hard lies, no grass under the golf ball? Well, you can't play it like the last shot we just played there. You need to make some alterations. So here's what we're gonna do. This time, the balance of the club is not your friend. We don't wanna slip the club under the golf ball. What we're gonna do now, look, is this. We're gonna take the bounce off, so we're gonna make it very neutral, right? If the too much bounce is on, what will happen is, the this bit will hit the, the hard ground and you'll thin the ball over the back of the green. So look, we're gonna take the bounce off, so we collect the golf ball more like this, all right? So what alterations do we make actually in setup? All I'm gonna do here, look, I'm gonna play a lot more like the first shot. I'm gonna have a little bit more shuffling than I had on the previous one, right? I'm gonna take the bounce off. And the key thing here again, like we did on the last one though, is commitment. I'm gonna finish with the butt pointing towards my left hip with slightly more lean of the shaft and fully committed to the shot. And there we look, just let it release. Whoop. Almost into the hole. But what happens if you haven't got as much green as I have to work with and you might need to get that ball stopping up a little bit faster. What you could do is try something a little bit more advanced. Take a look at this. So, I have got two wedges here, both 56. Now, if you've seen this, can you see a difference between these two wedges? This here has been grinded off. This one's completely straight, but this wedge on my Callaway jaws uh, raw has been grinded off. Now this is really important. This can make playing very, very tight lies really, really easy. So find, if you can, find a wedge that has more, what I call heat toe relief here, more grinded off, because then what you can do is on bare lies, you can actually play 
it a little bit more like the shot we played earlier and we could slip the toe under the bob so we can get the toe on the ground, the heel off the ground. And what I'm gonna do now is it literally, bet the ball slightly further forward in my stance, aim a little bit left. And I'm gonna imagine the toe literally digging down underneath the golf ball. And what it'll do is it'll give me a little bit of a softer slight. Hey, look at that one there, look. That one's pulled up a lot shorter as a byproduct. So great when you don't want that ball to release as much. So I've got a super cool shot I'm gonna show you in a second, but let's cover this one because this is one that everyone misses. Pay attention, spend just a few seconds of paying attention to the slope that you're on. Here, I'm on a real upslope. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this upslope is get my shoulders perpendicular to the slope. What do you notice about my stance now? It's not where it was before a club width apart. It's nice and wide. Why? Because I'm trying to find my balance on a slope, right? So from here, I've got my sh shoulders perpendicular. I'm actually going to get my, the ball favoring more now the higher foot. And I'm going to imagine now swinging up the slope. Now, when I do this, you'll notice here the butt of my club now isn't pointing towards my left hip. It's more pointing towards my belly button. I want to follow through and finish much, much more in this position here. What I don't want to do here, which most people do in, on upslopes, is have lots of shuffling here, lots of weight favoring my front foot because I'm going to dig and fat it. My weight is definitely favoring more of my back foot because I'm helping my, my shoulders get more level. And then all I'm going to do here is practice swinging. Look beautifully up the slope. Interesting. Look at the height on that one. Now that's come up a little bit shy. Notice how quickly that stops. That is something you have to pay attention to when you're on an upslope too. Strike was perfect, but I've got to be a little bit more aggressive. Let's come play one more shot before we get into the fun one that you're going to absolutely love. So let's check this one out. Downhill lie. The opposite is true. Same principles though. Ball favors higher foot. Now we've got to get the shoulders perpendicular this way. So now my weight favors a hell of a lot, almost all of it on my lead side here. What I'm going to do now, as opposed to letting the club release and f f uh, face my belly button, I it's much, much more now look facing and finishing at my left hip. Why? Because I'm, I'm swinging down the slope. The ball will come out very low and it'll come out very hot. It's all downhill here. So ball back in your stance, shoulders level, right? Commit to hitting down the slope, knowing you're not going to get a lot of height. I've got my 56 degree wedge, just literally down the slope, let it release. And hey presto, no stopping that, that'll do. Now, let's get into the fun shot. So I titled this video, didn't I? Before you chip, do this for five seconds. Throughout this lesson, I've been giving you um, all these different shots, but I'm getting you to assess the lie. Now, I've got no green to work with here. But I'm assessing the lie, and I can see that there's a lot of grass underneath this golf ball, which allows me to play the lob shot, the fun shot. A lob shot is where a ball goes nice and high, lands softly, almost like basically stops dead. Now, to play this shot, we play it very differently to what we've done all the other shots. As opposed to standing close, we now stand a little bit further away to let the handle drop look so we can start to add more loft onto the golf club here, okay? As opposed to setting the hands ahead of the golf ball, I'm actually gonna set them now more on the golf ball. The ball position's forward, my toe's pointing at 45 degrees and I'm gonna put 80% of my weight on this left side. But then I'm gonna, as opposed to keeping the shoulders level, I am now gonna literally tilt them a little bit further back because I want to strike the ground behind the golf ball now and slip that toe or the toe of the club underneath that golf ball, okay? Because I'm slipping it underneath, the butt now starts to point towards my right hip as opposed to with chipping, it pointed towards my left hip, okay? This is what's gonna give you the all important elevation. So let's have a look at this in action. Now, remember the lie has to be good to do. You have to have grass underneath the golf ball and you have to be fully committed. So I must let that club out as we've done earlier, let it drop and let myself commit to slipping that club underneath that golf ball. And look at that. Beautiful shot. Nice and simple. I've struck the ground behind the golf ball there, allowed the club to drop, and it gives me that lovely floating trajectory that lands and stops nice and softly. So I hope you enjoyed this series um, of shots all around the green. Look, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe share it with somebody who you know who's struggling with their short game. And do me a favor, 
if you struggle from that 30 to 80 yard pitch shot where you're a bit further away, distance control and strike, check this one out right here. If you wanna just be perfect the basic chip shot, check this video out, out right here. But remember, I put a free download practice guide in the description box below so you never have to remember a thing. Until next week, have a great golfing week.